Hey, what's up everyone? I am Ale, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to review one of the cheapest 8-string fan fret guitars I have found, the Harley Benton R458BK. If you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, please feel free to leave a like and comment on anything you see or hear. And if you also want to see more of this stuff like plugin reviews, gear demos and other heavy metal related videos, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps a lot, guys. Alright, so this thing cost me less than 200 bucks, so my expectations are really low. I've been playing 6 and 7 string guitars for the last 25 years, but this is the very first 8 string fan fret instrument that I've ever had. As I said, I bought it dirt cheap on Toman together with a pair of Daddario string set EXL148, light up heavy button 10 to 74. In the end, I paid less than 200 euros shipping included, which is really an insanely low price. Right, so now I'm going to show you the unboxing process. If you don't want to see it, just skip to the next section of the video. There are the chapter markers below.
Things have gone spectacularly sideways here and I've had a big issue with this Darius strings pack, as I mistakenly put them in swapping the 7th and the 8th string. Newbie error here, but why you'd ask? Because the color codes printed on the plastic bag containing the strings were showing wrong information. Beware folks, I hope up to now the Adario has already corrected the issue, but if you're using the same strings pack, take a look at the bolt ends. You want the 7th strings to be purple and the 8th strings to be copper, and not vice versa, as was written on the plastic bag I had. However, I managed to get out of the swamp and move the already cut strings back to where they belonged with the great help of heavy-duty pliers and gloves and swearing a lot. Oh hey, quick side note here, I tried my best to film this whole video in just one take, but you know sometimes life gets in the way, so don't panic if you see me wearing different t-shirts, ok? Is an elephant heavy? Let's go back to the video, baby! Alright, so let's take a closer look at these guitar specs. This is a Harley Benton R458BK progressive series electric guitar, bass wood body, bolt-on maple neck with a curious D profile, which I have never tried before, dual action truss rod, amaranth fretboard, 24 medium jumbo fan frets, multi-scale length of 25.5 to 27 inches. Also, offset dots in lace, which are really cool on this particular shape. It's got two proprietary high-gain humbucker pickups, which I don't really think are going to sound that good, one volume, one tone, three-way switch, black hardware and machine heads, black high-gloss finish on the body and the original strings were said to be some unknown brand 9265. Alright, so for this test I'm obviously using this Harley Benton R458 fan fret 8 string guitar straight into my Focusrite Skyler 2 2 straight into Reaper, where I have the Neural DSP 14 NTS suite with Dr. Bonker Sound Lab impulses. This guitar is tuned to E standard plus B and F sharp, and it's using that funky set of the Dara string 10 to 74 light top heavy bottom.
Now, the question that everybody has been asking me since I posted a picture on my Instagram of this guitar. Did I find any QC issues? Yes, definitely. As I said at the beginning of this video, I absolutely had no great expectations about this guitar. I mean, even the less expensive used 8 string from any famous brand costs more than 400 bucks, and they usually are just beaten up RG8s without a fan fret neck. So keep in mind that this instrument cost me less than 200 bucks and I can consider it as a toy guitar. Number one, the nut. The absolutely worst aspect I found was the nut. I mean, take a look at it. What is the thing? Some kind of locking nut for Z-tuning? Or were they just walking like Egyptians while filing this nut? My wild guess is that they just put a standard next nut in here, not suitable for fan fret guitars. This is both hilarious and ridiculously poor. I'll need to refile the descending part of this nut, being sure that the strings pass in a straight line and without messing the strings alignment. Number two, the ferrules. This is something I still cannot understand is happening in 2021 in brand new guitars. The 7th and 8th strings ferrules completely fell when I loosened the string tension. And this can both mean that the wood used for the body is poor and subject to huge expansion and contraction, and that they used the wrong drill to make the holes for the ferrules. I'll have to put some strong glue there and be sure they don't move. Number three, the dirt. I know, I know, we are wild metal heads, crazy people living our life at their limits, but hey, if I buy a brand new guitar, I expect it to be clean. I'm not sure what happened here, but the fretboard was so dirt and dry that I had to use a degreaser sanitizer first and two coats of lemon oil later to make it usable. This is not good. Number four, the setup. I'm not kidding here, guys. This guitar had the worst setup I have ever experienced in my whole life. The neck was bent like a banana, the strings were a mile high above the fretboard, almost half an inch, but yet the pickups were touching the strings when in playing position. So yeah, it is obvious that no setup was ever made on this guitar. I spent almost one hour tweaking everything and now I managed to get 12,000th of an inch, 0.2 millimeters of neck relief, a hair under 564 1.8 mm of string height and 464 of an inch, 1.6 mm of pickup height and now it plays well. And I say it again now, because I don't believe that it will keep this setup for too long. So what can I say about this guitar? Well, I'm about to say that I would really consider this guitar very good for an intermediate player. I'm not really sure I will give this Black Beast to a complete beginner guitarist because it would definitely scare him hair away. Six strings are enough to make something very difficult. Now imagine having eight strings and a multi-scale fretboard. It would definitely get some nightmares going over fret number three. However, for less than 200 bucks, this guitar is really good. The neck is good, the scarf joints should ensure the right tension to the strings coming off the nut, the fretboard is fast and my very first fan fret experience was great. I can't literally see any difference in my playing style. Does this mean maybe that I have been playing with the wrong techniques all my life long? I'm scared to know the answer. The pickups are essentially good too. Again, I wasn't expecting that super high output from these no brand unbuckers, but they definitely behave well, especially with high gain amplifiers and modelers. I found no grounding issues or strange noises coming from the wiring. I think I'll be removing the tone knob connection in the future and just rewire it with a simple volume knob. The body is extremely light. I mean, literally, if you knock on it, you can't feel any difference from knocking on any low budget kitchen table or shelf. I'm very tempted to refinish this guitar and see what hides under the paint, but also scared at the same time. So, considering everything, in the end, I would definitely buy this guitar once again, because for less than 200 bucks, you cannot find any fan fret 8-string guitar. I mean, even a good pair of active unbuckers cost more than 200 bucks. Alright folks, this is all for today. If you like this video and this type of content, please feel free to leave a like and comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you also want to see more of this stuff, like plugin reviews, gear demos and other heavy metal related videos, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps a lot, guys. If you want to directly support me, don't forget to listen to my instrumental solo album Musa and my highly practiced band project Awareness EP. They're out now and they're all available on all digital streaming platforms. iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, Tidal, Amazon Music, Google Music, you name it. And you can get the official merchandise directly on our Teespring campaign page. We've got beautiful v-neck tees, college hoodies and fitted tank tops. Also, if you're a bedroom producer like me, don't forget to take a look at my Facebook group, MSIMS and VST plugins for metalheads. It's a great community, growing more and more every day, and you always get updates for new VST plugin releases. So once again, folks, thanks for watching, stay safe, be good to each other, and see you the next time.